How's it going, my friends? Hey, ready for another math video? I hope so, because, well, this is what this video is going to be about. That's right. It's not going to be about science. No, although I love science, too. But this is all about math, about fifth grade math, and we have lesson 2.5. Cool. We're cruising through chapter two. And our topic today is going to be estimate with two digit divisors. Now, I've noticed in this chapter and try to wrap up a big idea here is we're really understanding how division works. And this is important because it actually explains the why. That's why we're not learning the standard algorithm. Like I know a lot of my students will say, Mr. Wara, my dad showed me another way. And I'm like, yes, I know. There's a lot of ways. There's also the calculator way, right? <laughs> but we want to make sure that we understand what we're doing. And that's what Common Core is all about. So let's go ahead and get started here with our focus. This is our purpose, our learning target. Here it's called the essential question. And it says, how can you use compatible numbers to estimate quotients? Ooh, I love that. Compatible. Yes, compatible. Compatible things get along, right? Things will work out. And we'll talk about compatible numbers because right here it says, connect. Connect. You can estimate quotients using compatible numbers that are found by using basic facts and patterns. Ooh, very nice. Let me see. We have a basic fact right here. It says 35 divided by 5 equals 7. Okay, everybody knows that. Well, it is. We hope most of us do, right? By fifth grade. But then it looks like they're adding on a zero. They're making their numbers 350 divided by 50, which still happens to equal 7. Interesting, interesting pattern. So even though we, what we did, we just made 35 10 times greater, making it 350. 50, I'm sorry, 5, we made 10 times greater, and there you go. It still ends up with the same quotient. But now look what happens. Now we have 3,500 divided by 50 equals 70. Oh, look at there. We have a quotient now that is 10 times greater because now it's 70. So what happened? Well, we made 35. We made that 100 times greater right and then we made the 50 only 10 times greater so interesting looking at a pattern here i wonder if this is true so with those two zeros that were added on to the dividend and only one zero added on to the divisor could we just take the dividend number of zeros minus the divisor number of zeros and get the answer well I'll look at that two zeros minus one zero is one zero hmm, i wonder if that's going to follow the pattern for the next one it says 35,000 divided by 50 equals 700. Sure enough, look at that. The dividend has three zeros. The divisor has one. Three minus one equals two. Okay, and an easy way you can always, if you're unsure about remembering that little trick, you could always just say, well, seven times five is 35. And then I have three zeros with the divisor and the quotient together, giving me the 35,000. The inverse operation, what we were doing the other day. Okay, very cool. Well, you know what? We can't move on with our math lesson. That's right, Mr. Waro. What must we do? Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now it says here, the observation deck of the Willis Tower in Chicago, Illinois, is 1,353 feet above the ground. Wow. That's cool. Anyways, it says elevators lift visitors to that level in 60 seconds. Are you serious? <laughs> Boy, talking about going supersonic speed. Now it says about how many feet do the elevators travel per second? Key word there, about. Well, it says here that Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower, is the tallest building in the United States. That's what I love about this real world, baby. I mean, these problems are like real stuff. So estimate. It says take 1,353 and let's divide that by 60. Okay, but we're going to estimate. And it says step one, use two sets of compatible numbers to find two different estimates. Ooh, we're not going to just find one. We're going to find two different ones. Okay, what are they going to do? Well, the first one here, look at, they found a compatible number with six. So we're looking at a divisor and our divisor there is going to be the number we're going to look at to kind of decide what estimate we should give to the dividend. If you notice in the two examples there, both of them have the same divisor, so we're not changing the divisor. We're just looking at the dividend. And in one estimate, they said, let's make it 1,200. 1,200 because 12 and 6 are compatible. 12 divided by 6 equals 2, right? And then we also have another uh, estimate of 1,800. And notice that 18 and 6, they're also compatible because 18 
divided by 6 equals? Yeah, equals 3. So you see where we're going with that. So we have two estimates. One estimate you can see is kind of small, 1,200, or I should say 1,200, the same, same thing, is less than that 1,353. But when we look at the 1,800, that's larger than the 1,353. So we're, we've chosen two estimates, one low, one kind of high. Okay, something to kind of keep in mind. Now for step two, it states, use patterns and basic facts to help estimate. There you go. That was the example we're talking about. 12 divided by 6 equals. So let's go ahead and do 12 divided by 6, 2. Very simple, huh? So 120 divided by 60 is also going to equal 2. Because we made both the dividend and the divisor 10 times greater. And the 10 times greater, where, are you, where am I getting that from? That zero right there. Made the number 10 times greater. But now we have 1,200 divided by 60. Aha, uh -huh. it's not just going to be 2 because remember, we have two powers of 10 here. We have one power 10 here. That's just like saying 2 minus 1. So that means we're going to need to add on one zero here. Will that get us back? It will. 6 times 2, 12. And two zeros gives us our 1,200. Now we come over here with 18 divided by 6. Of course, that's 3. Ooh, look at they're making it hard for us now. That's right. We have to put all our own numbers in. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing that we did was is we just made the numbers, remember, 10 times greater, both of them, which is going to still equal 3. But then we come up to 1,800 divided by 60. And now look at we have two powers of 10 here. Well, again, we're going to have 3 plus that 1, 0, 2 minus 1. Okay, that's one way you can do that. If you remain, I like to kind of think the problem out, but it's really easy sometimes when it comes to these zeros that you make a mistake. So it says the elevators travel about, and now we have that range. We have one range, which is about 20 to 30 feet per second. Okay, because this here's our estimate right here. Here's our 20, here's our 30. Ooh, cute little blue dot. Okay, now the more reasonable estimate is blank because blank is closer to 1,353 than blank is. I love this. I sound like I'm talking all weird. Mr. Wara. Well, you know, so I think the more reasonable estimate that we created here, I think is going to be that 1,200 that we had. To divide it by 60 equals 20. That was the whole equation. This one right here. We're going to take our blue dot. Come on, blue dot. There we go. And so it's because, well, basically because 1,200, and we can also say 1,200 is closer to 1,350 than, remember the other one we had, 1,800. It's much closer to that amount. So the observation deck elevators in the Willis Tower travel about, so we're going to say about 20 feet per second. That's pretty quick. You know, when you think of 20 feet per second, every second, gravity pulls down on our planet Earth at 32 feet per second, we say squared, okay? But that means every second, the acceleration coming towards our planet is 32 feet. That's almost the same speed as gravity is, 32 feet per second. And here you have 20 feet per second, so that's pretty fast, man. That elevator is cruising. Okay, back to our regular programming. Now it says example, estimate money. Okay, it says Miriam saved $650 to spend during her 18-day trip to Chicago. She doesn't want to run out of money before the trip is over, so she plans to spend about the same amount each day. It says estimate how much she can spend each day. Okay, it's a great real-world problem here. So here we have this estimate. So we have the $650 okay, divided by the 18 days. She wants to spend about the same amount every day. And so if we took the $600 and we divided by, we're going to keep, here's this $30, but we're going to want a number that's going to be compatible. So since the $600, we did change here. In this case, you know, normally we change the divisor. Here we change the dividend. And what's compatible there is, looks like to me, 20, right? 20 days. Because 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then we have just the two powers of 10 here minus the one power of 10 here, we end up with $30. Now it says, or we could change that estimate. Now look at here, our amount is greater. So that means our dividend has to be greater. 
Well, we could just do the reverse here. Here's our eight. This is money now, so I should probably put a money sign there. And now we have two zeros, so 800. So here are the estimate that was made. So we have two estimates. We have one estimate of $600 and then another estimate of $800. That's the key thing. The amount of money she actually has is $650. But these are the two different estimates. One's low, a little bit under $650, and the other one's high. And I would have to say significantly higher than $650. This is Miriam. So Miriam can spend about, and it's telling us, about $30 to $40 a day. It's kind of kind of handy when you can do a quick estimate, which is to me like mental math. Then you can give yourself a range. Like she, if she keeps her money right in that range, you'll probably be okay. So now we have mathematical practice too. Use reasoning. Okay, that's what we've been just doing. Which estimate do you think is the better one for Miriam to use? Explain your reasoning. Okay, if she used a lower estimate, I think the six hundred dollars using this particular one, and I'll go ahead and write that down. The six hundred dollars, that estimate. Now write the whole equation divided by twenty equals. $30. I think this is a better estimate because, again, she's not going to run out of money. She might have some money left over. If she were to use the other estimate, she would run out. She may, if she's spending $40 every day for 18 days, then she may run out of money and that wouldn't be good. So I would write it as this. If she were to use $40, you could take $40 and multiply it by 18 and you can see her number, it's going to be too much. So I'm going to say the $30 estimate would be better because she would have would have extra money or you could say she she wouldn't spend beyond the money she brought because forty dollars if we just took that and put it times 18 you could do the math here that's just 18 times 4 well 18 times 4 is 2 carry the 3 if 4 looks like 72 dollars plus a power of 10 so she'd actually spend $720. That's more money than she had. Wouldn't uh, cover her. And I'm just going to put purchases. I'm adding a lot of extra words in here. You don't have to write all this in here. Okay, now it says try this. Use compatible numbers. Find two estimates. So I think I would leave the divisor as 50. That way I could use 40 here. This might be kind of hard to see, but we're looking for those compatible numbers. So if I'm going to do a number divided by 50, see, I'm going to want 400 because that's so close to 400 because I could do the simple fact. 40 divided by 5 is 8, and that's it. I don't have another 0. Now, even though there's 2 here, and we were saying before, 2 minus 1, what's different with this one here is that 40 already had its own 0. See, if we were to multiply that back, 8 times 5 is 40, plus 1 is 400. Okay, I know I showed you that trick, and then you're going, but Mr. War, it doesn't work. Well, that's what the deal is, okay? And then I suppose another one, if we left it as 50, then I guess another one we could do 40, 45, couldn't we? Because 45, that would be 450 divided by, again, 50. And then that's going to equal, at least this, this time it's going to work because we don't have 40. So we just end up with 9. And we can double check 5 times, yep, 45 and 100. Zero, zero. So those are two estimates. This would be the low one, obviously, because we went under. And this one was the one that was high. Cool. Estimate the quotient. Okay. Well, I think I'd go ahead and make that when looking at that divisor. I think I would just make that 40. Then that way it will kind of help me deal with this. I was just looking for those first two digits. What could I change those into? It's 2,700. Just think of it. This is 2,700. You could just ignore the 64. So 2,700 is pretty close to 2,800 and 28 and 4, they're compatible. So if we just said, well, let's make our, our estimate here is going to be 2,800 divided by 40 would equal, now we have that 28 divided by 4, that's 7, and then we could do our 2 powers of 10 minus 1, which would be 70. So it would be $70. That would be estimating the quotient here. That works out, 2,800. Yes, looks like it comes back to where we need to go. So it says here is use compatible numbers to find two estimates. Well, it looks like they already found them for us. So here you notice that they divided by 20 by both. So they kept the the 20 is a divisor is that at first estimate. They went low with 140 because 14 divided by 2 is 7. And here we're not going to add on a power of 10, no zeros, because we have 10 zero minus 10. Zero. Now over here, we made the estimate larger. They made it 160. Again, though, simple fact, 8 and then no, no zeros. So they're, they're pretty close. You figure the quotient itself is 7 and 8. That's pretty close. Number 2 says, okay, so now we just have to continue doing that. So let's go ahead and make that 70. So I'm going to write my 70 here. We'll use 70 twice. Going to equal some amount. So now when I look at the number, I'm going to look at the 50. I'm going to look at the 503. Just going to look at those first two. Well, what number is compatible with 7? 51? 
No, 52, 53. Which way are we going to go? 49 would work. So if we did 490, so 49 divided by 7, because 7 times 7 is 49. So that's going to be 7. Look at there's no zeros added. That's it. That's a pretty good estimate. That's a really close estimate. But now it looks like we're going to have to go up high. And we're going to probably have to go all the way up to what? 856. We're going to have to go that high. So we'll just go 560 because we know that 8 times 7 is 56. There you go. That's how we do these. All right. We'll just keep on going. Here I have 80. So on this one here, we're going to have 7,200. Remember, because now we have four digits. We still looked at the first two. Okay, the 70, that helped us out because 72 divided by 8 is 9. And now we can subtract. That is going to make that 90. Now here to go on the low end. Well, if 8 times 9, we just do 8 times 8. 64, add on a couple of zeros. Now we have 6,400. We just went a little bit low, that's all. But we made the numbers compatible, and that's what's most important. And now you can see we're going to have to add on another zero. Because 8 times 8 is 64, plus 2, there you go. Keep on cruising. Well, they put a lot of these problems on here. Okay, so we have 30. Okay, low end. So I'm looking at my 29. So a little bit under 29. Might be 27. So that would be 270. I have three digits. Okay, and that's going to be 9. And it looks like I don't need to add on another zero. Because 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0. So we don't need to put anything there. Now we go on the higher end. Well, that's 3 times 9. So maybe just an easy 300. 300 divided by 30. That's pretty simple. 10. Nice. Keep on cruising. High and low. We go on the low. I'm looking at my 23. And you can see that with 23 and I have a 6 times 4. Well, that would be 24. That's going to make it the high end. So why don't we just do that one first then. 2,400. Okay, because 24 divided by 6 is 4. We have two zeros minus one zero, so we end up with one. That's right. Now on the low end would probably be the 18, right? If we want to take the six times, not four, but six times three, then the low one would be 1,800. That one's pretty low. That's quite a ways away from that number. But 18 uh, divided by six is three. And then, of course, we have 30 because we have two here. We have one here, and that will get you back to 1,800. Okay, and the last one I just went ahead and just solved it so you can see it. Probably a little bit more challenging because our number here in the divisor was only a 2. I mean, it says 20, but, you know, 2 we're looking for that. And so 52 divided by 2. If you could see that 25 and 25 is 50, so if you split it in half, divide by 2, you would end up with 26. Uh, probably a little bit more challenging, number 6, than all the others. But hey, my friends, that's it, man. That's the end. Girls, okay. Well, you know what? Well, my friends, again, we completed another math video. What an accomplishment. Hey man, we rock. Fifth graders rock. Now, my friends, like always, live long and prosper.